Oh, hello. Okay, so today is May 30th. <laughs> Yesterday was May 29th. And um, I, it has been a crazy day. It's already like 5.30 at, at night and I uh, are in the afternoon and I, um, I got up early this morning and did my meditation. I was going to come and make a video right after my meditation. In fact, I was so excited because um, just because I was feeling so good in that meditation, but I sat down and I started writing instead. And then I looked up at the clock. I had an appointment I had to go to. So it's just, and then the washing machine broke. And so my husband and I went and did that or whatever. So anyway, we did find a washing machine and um, those are, that's life, right? And I have to admit that I was a little nervous today. I wish I had done the video before in the morning when I was feeling so good after my meditation. And then uh, because I, I could feel the doubt creeping in and I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? What the hell am I doing? So here I am and I don't really know what I'm going to say except for, um, I guess I was just going to tell a little story about when I was a little kid. When I was a little kid, I was about four years old and I was in the back bedroom of the house that my parents built that we lived in. I had three four, three older sisters and um, I was about four and all of a sudden the this was my most lucid vision that I've ever had in my life. The walls, all of a sudden I was sitting I was standing at the bottom or in the surgery part of a surgery uh, theater. And, a, and so when I looked up, there was this panel of people or beings sitting around me, standing, just they were there around in that panel. And telepathically, they said to me that they were with me and that, that I didn't, that just to carry on. I didn't get any revelations or anything. But they told, except for that they were with me. And then, um, and just that they were with me and that to just carry on. And I remember it just going away, maybe as fast as it came. And then it, I was back in the room again. But it was outside of my body. And not like the visions that I have now that are in my third, through my third eye when I close my, in my mind's eye when I close my eyes and tune in. Um, and uh, I wasn't afraid, and I didn't tell anybody. In fact, I never talked about it for years. I never talked about it. But I always knew that I wasn't alone. And that was part of the evidence for me. And uh, and like I said, I never, I wasn't afraid. And then years later, I told, like last year, I went to visit my cousins back east, and my cousin is a scientist, and I told him the story, and he said, well, how could you possibly remember that? You know, are you sure that you really remember it? What, you know, maybe it was just a dream or something. And I, I know it, it was a real thing that happened. It was a very lucid, I was very lucid. It was a mo it was the most objective spiritual experience I've ever had. So I, and then I think I waited for a long time in my life um, to, I always thought that psychics, you know, saw things outside of themselves like you see in the movies. And maybe some people do. But um, I always was clairaudient, meaning I could always hear things. And I'm not talking about voices. You know, it's not a, it's not like that at all. It's more like a you would hear a word or it, it was a word and maybe a knowing. But it wasn't until about, I guess, about 15, 20 years ago that I started to develop my, my inner vision, my psychic sight. But that first experience that I had, pretty much uh, when somebody would say to me, how do you know that you're, how do you know that all that, you know, if your beliefs and that there's something outside of yourself, how do you know that's true? Well, because I had that experience. That was the most, um, like, it wasn't scary and it wasn't, um, it was very calming and beautiful, really. And, uh. Anyway, so I just wanted to tell you that because that's kind of beginning of the definition, defining me within my spiritual life. I always, as a kid, I like I said, I always had this sense of not being alone 
and I guess from that experience. And then um, I always, um, we weren't a religious family. It weren't Christian, but my grandparents were theosophists, meaning they, and theosophy is a philosophy that studies all religion. And, and theosophists were sort of, you know, one of the group main groups that brought um, the Eastern teachings, uh, Hinduism, the Eastern mystical teachings to the West. And they sort of melded Eastern and Western thought. So, um, so I would get little um, introductions to ideas like reincarnation and that we had guides and that and we had spirit guides that were with us and um, that our life was, my grandmother used to say, and she was very simplistic in the way she explained things, but, you know, that's how you would be with a little kid. And she would say things like, everything is like a lesson, a school, it's like school. We're in school, we're learning lessons. But I didn't really understand the depth of that. And, you know, it took me a lifetime to really start to understand the depth of what that meant, <clears throat> which I will go into at another time. But one thing I, I did want to say about that, so I, I always had this sort of knowing, and I had a, so I've always, in the beginning, even when I was a kid, I had this feeling of, um, of a presence beyond myself and what I could see, you know, in, my, in the so-called reality, I'm quoting here. Um, and the other thing was, is that I always had some sort of affinity towards Christ. I always loved Jesus, but I was always really pissed off by the church. And I couldn't really explain it when I was a kid. My mom would take us to see these beautiful cathedrals because she just marveled at the architecture and the beauty of the stained glass and just, you know, all the the the, the art of, of these beautiful buildings. But we didn't get into the, um, the religious, you know, she never really talked about any of that. In fact, I don't think she was that interested. Uh, for her, it wasn't that important. But for me, I was interested in the stories. Um, and then my next experience, I guess I was about, I don't know, eight or nine, and our neighbors were Jewish, and they invited me to Passover, and I loved that. I absolutely loved the ritual, so I felt like I was at home in the ritual. You know, I just, I I loved it, and I loved learning about it, and, and I did learn about it, and then I was able to talk. I, maybe I was a little older, maybe, no, I think about nine or ten. Okay. I'm going to sign off now, and I um, will be back tomorrow, and I wish for all of you who are listening to my words the best, and I send you lots of love. Goodbye.